Welcome to the details. Let me take you through all of that. Now, government has described as false claims by policy think tank Kimani Africa that the country risks losing some $30 billion if it fails to claim ownership of two oil wells currently under the country, uh, under the country uh, of the with the Acre Energy um, contract. Energy Minister John Peter Ameu says Eka Energy is not currently undertaking exploratory work in the new fields without legal authority. Imani Africa on Thursday alleged that government was allowing Eka to own the fields due to a relationship between a partner company and the GNPC boss Dr. KK Sapo. Listen. Petroleum agreement under which Eka is working um, actually is supposed to last up to 2036. Now, they have asked an extension up to 2049, but the Petroleum Commission says that they are going to grant them that extension because of its loss. If you recall, it loss happened in 2015, right? Yeah, 2015, and it was ruled in 2017. It loss is the, the arbitration, the international... You know, Ghana Cote d'Ivoire had this uh, uh, problem, maritime dispute over who actually owns some aspects of our oil. And I think it's lost rude that we own everything. In fact, we won the case hands down. Now, for the Petroleum Commission to suggest that because AKS find is inhibited or was inhibited by its loss, and so they are going to grant them, they believe that the minister should grant an extension of up to 2049, 13 more years, is actually worrying. I thought I should put this out. The second point also is that the economics of the analysis that the Petroleum Commission puts out suggests that ACAS find, as we speak, is about 297 million barrels of oil. Mm -hmm. Now, the understanding is that if we're looking at that accounting, what it means is that Ghana is going to get about 55% of the rent, economic rent from that. The argument being made is that we are making the argument from Imani that because we know, and AK has actually um, confirmed that the recoverable, recoverable assets are up to almost a billion, what it means is that if we suggest, if we argue our point that the existing additional wells, or the two wells that were found, and whose um, uh, should I say assets are close to about 500 million barrels of oil, should come under a new petroleum agreement. What it means is that the fiscals will work in our favor. So there's a lot that is wrong with this agreement, and I think that both the Petroleum Commission should not just be, and then the Ghana National Petroleum Co 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 Corporation, Co Co is Corporation, right? Yeah. Should not be giving opinions in the dark. If the minister is not going to listen to them by the end of today, the they must also come out with what they are saying. And I think it's important to put this in perspective. So that is Imani Africa President uh, um, Franklin Kujo there yesterday with that list of what they think has gone wrong. Well, this afternoon there has been a swift response by government. The Energy Ministry organized a press conference. I'll take a very quick break. When I return, my colleague Joseph Akable, who covered that press conference, will join me and will break it down to you, the responses that government has for Imani Africa on these allegations. Do stay. Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Joseph Akable joins me shortly, but Energy Minister John Peter Ameo maintains that the allegation made by Imani Africa of conflict of interest leveled against he, especially that's leveled against GNPC boss, is false. Here's how he puts it. Form you that fuel trade came into the petroleum agreement during the NDC regime at the time Dr. KK Sapong did not know if ever he will become the chief executive of GMPC. And under the NDC, we are all aware of the kind of politics that was practiced at that time. You either belong to them or you are not part of the cake. And I don't see how they were going to open the door as His Excellency Nana Kufuado has opened the door to everybody. 
If Dr. KK managed to get his way through then, then kudos. But I can assure you that the current beneficiary owners of fuel trade, it's common and visible for everybody to see. All that you need to do is to walk to the registrar general and determine who the true owners of fuel trade is. We wish to state that we, as a country, we are meant for development. As a country, we want to get everybody on board in whatever we do. As a country and ministry, we are open up to the public. And it takes everybody any particular time in time from morning to evening to walk to any of our offices to inquire for questions or ask questions, and then we will provide answers. John Bitameo is Minister for Energy there. You heard his response basically to the part that uh, fuel trade belongs to uh, Dr. K.K. Sabon and or his family. Well, one major issue that came up had to do with the allegation that Ghana is likely to lose about 30 billion uh, cities in this. Joseph Akable was there at the press conference. He joins me now in the studio. Joseph, it's good to have you. Now, let's, let's, let's hear or break it down to us what government response has been to the allegation that they're just looking on for the entire country to lose close to 30 billion. Uh, government actually is disputing the figure in the first place. Mm -hmm. You recall that Imani had estimated that the two wells was worth about 30 billion dollars, oh, close to 30 right. billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, government is saying that uh, that cannot be accurate because uh, they claim that the well, in terms of the oil deposit, is about 450 million. Uh, they are saying that in terms of the equipment that Ghana uses currently, mm -hmm. if you try to recover the oil, you are not able to recover 100% of the oil. So the 30 billion was estimated based on the assumption that government will be able to retrieve all the oil deposits. Government is saying that the equipment allows 25% to be retrieved. And if you use the 25% at the current price per barrel on the market, you realize that government, in terms of the value of the field, it adds up to about $7.3 billion and not the $30 billion as was being alleged. You can listen to the Energy Minister explain that. Mm. Well, we'll bring you the Minister uh, for Energy uh, saying that particularly, uh, you know, very contrasting view to what uh, Imani Africa puts. Imani Africa puts it at 30 billion. Government says we're looking at 7.3 billion. Well, that's a very uh, sharp d difference there. We'll be trying to get to the Imani Africa as well to get their response to this um, matter. But uh, Imani, uh, they, 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 there are other things that they responded to as far as the allegations, of course, that were leveled against them. Um, um, not just fuel trade, but of course the government for its role mm. in looking mm. on and making this company, this Norwegian company, go on to uh, uh, operate under alliances that they believe has expired. Yes, you recall it had to do with the ownership of the field and whether they were engaging in exploratory well after uh, the ownership had expired, the agreement between Imani and government had expired, which meant that those fields that have been discovered automatically belongs to government and not belonging to Aka Energy. Now, the explanation from the ministry is to the effect that, indeed, it wasn't exploratory work that led to the discovery. They were rather doing appraisal, and in terms of undertaking appraisal, they do not own, uh, it doesn't kick in that it has expired. They don't require a new petroleum agreement. So the current petroleum agreement allows for that discussion to take place, and that is why uh, the company has written to the ministry, asking mm. the ministry for approval for a plan of development. I'll come back to, uh, to, to you, Joseph, so that we get into that one. But let's go back to that earlier uh, sound that we're expecting from the ministry, about whether or not we're losing as much as $30 billion. Imani stated with certainty in its presentation that there was no dynamic communication without providing a sheer evidence of their assertion. As we speak now, we can confirm that the world's drill encountered the same geological reservoir system as the Peckham Field. Aka Energy is still evaluating how the worlds are connected. Therefore, we wonder the basis for Imani's conclusion that there is no dynamic communication between the worlds. We call the word dynamic communications. It's a common word, so anybody can decide to use it. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Imani was also not truthful to Ghanaian when it stated that Ake drilled the Hickory West as an exploratory well. Hickory West, ladies and gentlemen, has not been drilled. The well that Imani claimed has been drilled has not been drilled. It must be stated that as a country, we operate within the laws governing the petroleum agreement. Therefore, any petroleum find when produced will be shared according to the terms of the applicable petroleum agreement. The Deepwater K3 Point Tunnel Petroleum Agreement provides a crude oil sharing mechanism in addition to the benefits such as taxes, of which under the existing agreement, Ghana's share is estimated to be between 55 to 60 percent of net oil produced. It is important to state that these benefits are spread over the full life cycle of the agreement. Therefore, for anybody to contend that these were exploration wells drilled outside the exploration period, hence any petroleum fine from these works required a new petroleum agreement with new terms is grossly misinformed. So that's the energy minister there. Let's break it down for you, all the things that they've responded to um, uh, in the Imani allegations. Um, Joseph Akabli is still here. Joseph, there's also talk about deadline, which government says it's within. Break it down to us. What is the allegation from Imani and what is government's response? So Imani had made a point that uh, once the exploratory work was undertaken by Aker Energy, uh, they were required to submit an agreement, a plan of development to government, and government was supposed to respond to them within 30 days. Now, they had, Imani had said that uh, the government was written to by the company sometime in March, and we, by the close of day to day, uh, that 30-day deadline would have elapsed because if government fails to respond to them, it means that automatically that agreement becomes the binding law between Ghana or the binding agreement between Ghana and the company. Now, the Energy Ministry is saying that when they received a letter, in terms of the count, they responded yesterday, and that puts the count at 28 days because it deals with working days. So in terms of their responding to the extension, they are within the 30-day limit that we're supposed to respond to. Mm, help me understand this. 30 days, they're talking about uh, 30 days within which Aka Energy was supposed to renew its agreement with the government? Is Aka Energy so? presents an agreement to government. Mm -hmm. Then government is supposed to, within 30 days, either respond. approve okay. or reject it. Okay. If you fail to either approve or reject it within a 30 days, mm -hmm. it automatically becomes the binding agreement between the two parties. Right. Now, Imani had claimed that the terms of the agreement were unfavorable. Mm -hmm. And so if government, by close of day today, fails to respond, that would mean that that becomes the terms of the agreement, which do not favor the country. Okay. Now, government is saying that it received the letter sometime in March and yesterday day it wrote responding to Aka Energy mm -hmm. and that was 28 days less than the 30 day deadline so, so the government has responded to, to government Aka has Energy. responded to that deadline and that's and the response is that they are actually rejecting the agreement they are rejecting the agreement and this response that government sent to uh, Aka Energy was it before the Imani press conference or was it after did they say the Imani press conference was yesterday and the point the minister was making was that if uh, Imani had simply placed a phone call to government they would have been aware that indeed the uh, government was communicating or had communicated with them. And the Petroleum Commission boss explains that they had written to the Energy Ministry long before 24th of April, but the Energy Ministry says was waiting to write a reasoned opinion and present it to the company. But well, we can hear them now. Based on a thorough study and review of the Akers Petroleum Develop Plan of Development, the Commission came to conclusion that Aker Energy's plan of development cannot be approved in its present form. As indicated earlier, the Commission, by a letter dated 17th of April 2019, transmitted an advisory paper made up of the reasons why the POD cannot be approved to the Honorable Minister, stating, among others, that Aker Energy must be made to review the POD to comply with the necessary provisions of law and also as in the Petroleum Agreement. The Honorable Minister considered the Petroleum Commission's advisory paper and agreed 
with all reasons it gave. Subsequently, by a letter dated the 24th day of April 2019, communicated to Ake Energy that the plan of development cannot be approved in its present form, and further asked them to review their plan of development and resubmit same within 45 days. These matters, ladies and gentlemen, are matters of record. Yet, my good friends in Imani, without checking whether any such steps had been taken since the POD was submitted, claim at its press conference yesterday that even though it is aware that a recommendations have been made to the Honorable Minister, it did not know whether Ake Energy had been written to. A simple calculation on the passage of time between 28th March 2019 and 24th April 2019 show that it was 28 days within the 30 day limitation. John Pitameu is Energy Minister there. We're just breaking down for you a press conference that the Energy Ministry organized in response to Imani Africa's allegations that there's some wrongdoing, uh, wrong, uh, wrongdoing yeah, ongoing uh, between government and Aka Energy, a Norwegian company. Joseph Akable is the one who covered that uh, press conference for us. He's still here with me in the studio. So basically, we've spoken about the deadline, which government is disputing. We've spoken about the cost uh, Imani says is involved. Government is disputing the ownership of fuel trade, which government is disputing disputing again and then we're now talking about um, the agreement extension now government has rejected claims that the existing petroleum agreement with the energy company has been extended Joseph what exactly was Imani's allegation uh, so they had claimed that I mean the petroleum agreement had been extended from 2036 to 2049 uh, what, what is important to know this is different from mm -hmm. the one relating to the two new oil wells that have been discovered this is the already existing agreement and the minister's response is that Everyone knows that it's Parliament that is able to approve such agreements and also approve extension if necessary. And as far as everyone is aware, again, the minister says, if anyone is bothers to check with Parliament, no such extension has been done. So he finds it strange that anyone will even suggest, for whatever reason, that such extension has been done. We can hear the minister. That Ake has extended the period of the petroleum agreement from 2036 to 2049. Ladies and gentlemen, this is untrue. Just to check and see whether an agreement is extended from 2036 to 2049 can be done with everybody can do that. My little daughter can equally do that because she can clearly read between the year 2036 and the year 2049. The extension of petroleum agreement is a preserved, reserved, authoritatively done by only the representatives in the House of Parliament. Money, unfortunately, <laughs> lacks understanding and thinks that a petroleum agreement can be extended by a minister. It is false. Ladies and gentlemen, this industry is a knowledge-intensive industry and requires a higher level of intelligence. Requires a higher level of intelligence. It's a knowledge uh, industry. Imani lacks understanding. That is Minister John Peter Ameu, Energy Minister there. I've got Joseph Akable here in the studio still with me, but I also have Imani Africa's Vice President Kofi Bento joining us on the line so that we can deal with this matter. Mr. Bento, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. First of yeah, all, thank you. right. First of all, do you stand by the claims that Dr. Sapong or someone related to him owns fuel trade? No, you know we didn't make claims. We repeated notorious allegations when we said it clearly that it keeps coming up that this issue is a problem. And so we said that, look, it is alleged that this is the situation. And then choosing our words very carefully, we said if that is the situation, it should be clarified why we have that kind of arrangement. And, and, and indeed, it will be in a conflict. So mm. if Doc has come to play his name, I mean, we can all move forward on that. So but I Mr. Bento, Mr. Mr. Bento, that's where, that, that's, where, uh, that's where a lot of people will say, well, well, you should have checked first before you made that allegation, that you repeated that alleged 
uh, uh, position. No, we, we, hold we on, sir. Hold on, sir. That the, the point they made, uh, Dr. Sapon, for example, makes is that they, they've actually handed you two weeks to apologize because they believe that you have defamed him. He believes that his name has been dragged in the mud without, without checks by the people who made the allegation, including your very good self. We have checked and in, on the new, on, on the, um, at the Registrar General, there is Mr. Chinua, there is Mr. French Kujo and others who are very quiet, respectable people. Doc, Dr. Kitsapon's name is not there. That is why we made the point that there is sufficient, okay, uh, suspicion, okay, there is a lot of allegation concerning that. That is why we chose the word carefully and said, this is what is being alleged. And we said clearly that it will be useful for it to be clarified. Dr. Sapon has clarified. If Dr. Sapon wants to go to court to go and you know, deal with that, that is all well and good. It is his prerogative. But I think that matter is very simple and clear. They've given you two weeks to apologize. Would you do that? Well, I think two weeks will come and then we'll see how it works out. I think this matter is very clear. At this point, you don't know whether or not you need to apologize? My dear, I thought you called me to discuss some other issues instead of spending all the time on this one. We will. We're not spending all the time. I just need clarification well, I don't from have your time. side. I have and to leave in about thirty seconds, actually. So I very well. You have made time. you had made other allegations as well, including uh, the fact that uh, the cost, uh, the government is government of Ghana or Ghana is losing at about thirty billion dollars. Government says if you look at the estimations properly, you're, you're going to. I mean, this will, could cost about seven point three billion dollars. In the first place, that is not a substantive issue. The substantive issue is that we have found oil in this country, and government of Ghana has a share in that oil. Indeed, it belongs to us. And the point is that we are supposed to sit down with the people who found the oil and negotiate what our portion is. That is the substantive issue. As to the value of oil, the price of oil can fall tomorrow and it will change. We said that the oil is worth 30 million, according to Acre's own estimation. They estimated that the oil is up to 550 million barrels, and it is possible for them to recover up to a billion. That is what they said. Using just 550 million barrels, calculate at the oil price of $50, you will come to the value of 30 billion. We know that not all of it belongs to us. That is why we said we have found $30 billion worth of oil, and Ghana has shares in that oil. Since February, we are not aware that we have had meetings with them to discuss what our share is and how that oil is going to be dealt with. That is the substantive issue, not whether it is this price or it is that price. And I think we should focus on the key issues. Not a problem at all. We can focus on the key issues. But then these are allegations you made and government has responded to it, which is why we bring it back to you. But again, speaking about the substantive issue, as you put it, government is also maintaining that there is no new petroleum agreement uh, that is required. And it has also proceeded to inform um, Aka Energy, uh, responded to Aka Energy's um, uh, uh, the, the proposal brought, for, brought to it by Aka Energy, and it did so within 28 days. Well, we disagree with government when it says that there is no new petroleum agreement required, and that is why we say the law is clear. The question that the government must answer is whether the new fines are part of the existing fines that has made. If they are part of the existing fines, the tests that were conducted will prove that. It is not for me or for the government to do so. We checked sufficiently with persons who were involved in this, and we are informed reliably that the test came out to show that they are not part of the new fines. I would want government to confirm if they are part of the existing fines that has bequeathed to ACA. Now, if they are not part of the existing fines, it is not for me or the minister. It is the law that says it has to go under a new petroleum agreement. And that is why we say if we disagree, we will all look at the law and see how it will be interpreted in this context. Mm. Speaking of the extension, they said that it is not the minister's power, it's not within the minister's power to, uh, to extend the agreement. We never said it is the minister's prerogative to extend an agreement. We said that ECA has written in their POD that they intend to stretch the period from 2036 to 49. And they have written in other documents also that the economics of the field is said that they intend to stretch it from that period to 2049. And the point we made is that it is written in the POD. This is what their intention is. It is expressed clearly. And the POD says that if we don't respond or the minister mm. does not respond, it shall be deemed as approved 
What okay. that means is that then you are going to have to argue that you did not approve it. So we ask the minister, why is it that in the first place they should not even put those things in writing to you? Because mm. we are the owners of the oil. They have to use a different mode to suggest that they want to extend. But here they are. They have said that, well, the economics of it is like that. We have extended it to this point. And they have written it in a letter to you. If you do not respond, there is a principle in law called latches and appearances. If you don't respond, that principle works against you. And that is why we're urging that the minister should act quickly. Now, the minister says they've acted two days ago. Yeah. All well and good, but why wait for two days when there were clear things in the POD that the, on the first day you should have responded to? Mm. For instance, giving you preconditions on the fiscal terms. Mm. Okay, that is not something that you spend time on. I, I'm not sure what there is to consider about that when the person is clearly in breach of the law. So our issue, the reason why we waited and waited and waited till the day before the deadline, is that we were hoping that there would be some reaction and in good time. We are happy that some action is happening now, mm. but we still insist that it should have happened earlier. And this is $30 billion worth of oil. We still don't know if we have sat down to discuss a new petroleum agreement with them. If the minister says we don't need a new petroleum agreement, that is where our problem is. We think we need a new petroleum agreement. Okay, well, you still uh, refer to the 30 billion again. They say it's 7.5. Yes, point we insist on that. Fair enough. Uh, the, the, but you, 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 your government also says that it has disapproved uh, ACA's plan of development. You're, you're aware of this? Yes, we said in our presentation that we have cited recommendations to the minister. I said it in the presentation. We have cited recommendations to the minister and recommendations from experts that they should act to disapprove or disapprove. This POD, but as at the time that we were having the forum, we were not aware that it's happened. Now they tell us it has happened a few hours before then. All well and good, but our point still stood, stood and still stands. Okay. Finally, Mr. Bento, uh, you, you have concerns. Imani Africa has concerns about this because you believe that uh, Ghana's interests have not been well served in there. What's the next line of action for you? Well, we are waiting. We've had the responses, and the responses we've had, some of it is assuring because it looks like there's some action. But some of it also is not satisfactory, for instance, when the minister says that there is no need for a new PA. So we'll continue to read the law, and if we believe that we both need some interpretation of the law, we'll proceed to seek the interpretation of the law. Thank you very much, sir, for your time Thank this you, afternoon. Sir. Kofi Bento is Vice President for Imani Africa. They are responding to government response to their initial, uh, if you like, allegations of things that are going wrong with the uh, deal between Ghana and Aka Energy, a Norwegian oil firm. Um, Joseph is still here with me. Joseph, you covered that press conference, and it's interesting. It was not just the minister who addressed this press conference. There were other mm -hmm. people who addressed this. Give us a wrap-up. So there were largely technocrats word. from uh, various agencies or ministries connected to at this whole discussion. So we had a Petroleum Commission that spoke first. Its CEO, Egbert Fabel, came to explain that they had indeed recommended to the ministry not to approve the plan of development as submitted by Aka Energy because mm. they failed to meet the criteria set by law, for which reason they've asked that they prepare a new agreement and mm. present it to uh, the ministry and the minister will decide whether to approve that or not. And that is a plan of development, not a new petroleum agreement, which would have to go to parliament for approval. Mm -hmm. There was also a director at the energy ministry, he's in charge of upstream, who came to explain that the discovered wells are not new wells, as has been alleged by Imani Africa. He says that in terms of the analysis so far, it appears they are within the same and they are of the nature of the same geological basin that ACA already has mm. the power and approval of parliament to undertake operations there. And so mm -hmm. there's no need to undertake a new petroleum mm -hmm. agreement if it is not a new world that has been discovered, contrary to what Imani Africa is saying. So they expect ACA to prepare a new agreement and present it to the Ministry for Approval within some 45 days, and they'll take it from there. It's very interesting, uh, this uh, deal and the way it's going, but it promises to have uh, bring us a much more interesting days um, ahead. But Joseph, thank you very much. Joseph Akable covered that press conference by the Ministry of Energy, organized swiftly, uh, barely 24 hours after Imani Africa's allegations of some uh, mishaps ongoing with that uh, relationship or with that arrangement that Ghana has with Aka Energy, the Norwegian firm.